Earlier this week, I asked you if you had any questions that you'd like me to answer, and the response has been awesome. Honestly, I was kind of worried that no one would answer, or even worse, I would just get like one response, and then I would have to make a, a whole video about it because I said that I would, and it would just be weird and kind of embarrassing. But you totally delivered. This is an amazing community, and thank you so much for being so engaged. Real quick administrative note, I did combine or paraphrase a couple of questions just to kind of make this whole thing flow a little bit better. Also, I'm gonna try and keep things relatively concise as I want to make sure that I respond to everybody in one way or another. This might be the first video that I've ever done without a hat, so this is what my head looks like. Also, Lynn has the forerunner today to get some wedding stuff done, so that's why I'm not outside like I normally am. So let's dive in. What motivated you to start this YouTube channel? Did you have prior experience with content creation, storytelling, filming, or editing? For a really long time, I was into watching bushcraft videos from this guy, Joe Robinette, on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link down in the description to his channel, but I would turn it on all the time just because I found it super relaxing. He just kind of wanders out of the woods and builds shelters and stuff, and for whatever reason, I just found it super chill and really enjoyed watching it. For the longest time, I thought to myself, it would be really, really fun to be able to do that same sort of thing. At this point, my interests lie more with lightweight and ultralight backpacking and not so much with bushcraft but the same concept applies. I thought it would be really fun to go out and make videos of me just kind of hanging out in the woods. In January 2023, I was laid off from my job that I had for nearly a decade in technology sales. And at that point, I thought to myself, it's really now or never. So I decided I was just gonna kind of do this YouTube thing for a while and see where it goes. At this point, I already owned a camera, which is the one that I'm still using today. Although I really had no idea how to use it very well, I was mildly obsessed with watching YouTube videos on videography and photography but again, no real experience using a camera other than just, you know, playing around with it on the weekends and stuff like that. The more that I got into it, the more that I realized that I wanted to make a channel that kind of merges my love for backpacking as well as videography and color and sound design and all of those other things that I find really interesting when it comes to making videos. This is why the channel sometimes seems a little bit all over the place. It's a bit vloggy and me just messing around with my camera and a bit educational and talking about backpacking. Do you have a white whale trail? Something that you can't do easily but want to do badly. This probably isn't the most exciting answer, but definitely the Pacific Crest Trail. It's basically in my backyard and I feel like I should say something a little bit more interesting like the Andes or something like that. But the truth is I've been thinking about and sort of planning a Pacific Crest Trail trip for about 15 years now. The idea of the Pacific Crest Trail really came shortly after college, so this would have been 2008 or something like that. Uh, I was on the phone with a friend and he was like, we should totally hike the Pacific Crest Trail. And I was like, what's that? This is a time when YouTube was definitely a thing, but it wasn't anything like it is today. And this was before Wild came out, uh, the book, not the movie, which I think had a really big impact on people's awareness of the Pacific Crest Trail. So it wasn't really something at that point that a lot of people had heard of. There definitely was a thriving through hiker culture at that point, but without YouTube and the other social media platforms, if you weren't in the middle of it, it wasn't really something that you knew about. At least that's the way that it seems to me anyway. Maybe it's just because I wasn't as involved back then. Anyway, Anyway, it obviously didn't work out and I haven't hiked the Pacific Crest Trail yet, but my interest in backpacking really grew out of that trip that didn't materialize. So yeah, it's been 15 years of daydreaming. I'll do it at some point. What are your plans for Passover? So I'm actually not Jewish, although that comes up all of the time based on my last name. My understanding is that the German spelling, and I'm German, uh, is S-C-H-W-A-R-Z, whereas the Jewish variant is S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. Obviously that's not totally exclusive, anyone can have any last name. The story goes that sometime in World War II, my grandfather's last name was S-C-H-W-A-R-Z. Then on some random piece of paperwork, it got changed to S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z, and we've been Schwartz's with a T ever since. That said, a very happy Passover to you, my friend. I'm interested in how you train, not just physically, but mentally for your trips. It takes emotional resilience to be out in nature, especially by yourself, and it's not always easy to stay positive or calm if a challenging situation arises. How did you develop those mental skills? Whew, that's a big topic. Physical training is pretty straightforward for me. You know, obviously I'm not Chris Hemsworth or whatever. I run four times a week and I strength train twice a week. Strength training is either weights, calisthenics, or I ruck as well, which I find is a really good way to keep in shape for hiking. For strength training, I aim for the minimum effective dose, so just 
enough to build a little bit of muscle mass and protect my joints and no more because I don't want to beat on myself too hard so that I'm tired when I'm actually out backpacking. Also on the physical prep side of things, I do a cold shower once a day. I'm prone to Raynaud's phenomena, which basically means that I lose circulation in my fingers when I get really cold. And I found that cold exposure actually really helps with that. On the mental prep side of things, I think that that is a much harder question to answer. I read a lot of stoicism and I kind of have this life philosophy to just always be chill, no matter what's happening. I found that if you're able to detach yourself emotionally from whatever happens to be going on, you're able to make much better decisions. I'm not a through hiker or anything, at least not at this point, and I think that that's where a lot of the mental toughness really comes in. You know, the ability to be out in the woods away from your friends and family for months at a time, I think would be very challenging. So when I do get to that point, I will definitely let you know. I can think of one situation though, where I was really faced with a, a truly difficult challenge while backpacking, and that is when I broke my leg on trail. Luckily, I was only a few miles from the car, but it basically took the whole day to get back by dragging myself through the dirt. I had a friend with me, but I didn't want him to carry me, although he ended up doing it for that last half mile or something like that. And that's only because it hurt so bad to have him try to move me that, that I didn't want him to. But in that situation, I really just did my best to try to detach from the pain as much as possible and just kind of think through what it is that we need to do to get back to the car. There are some videos that exist from that that he recorded on his phone and somehow we managed to have kind of a fun day <laughs> in, a, in a very weird way. Uh, there were lots of like Rambo jokes going around and yeah, stuff like we that. We got a night in the ER to look forward to. Oh yeah, it hurts a lot. I know, I know. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> a couple of good books to read if that's something that you're interested in would be The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. And I also really like Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. So yeah, no real training that I can think of for mental toughness or anything like that. Although I do think that it's really important. Thoughts on collabs with other YouTubers to grow both channels. Thoughts on who you'd eventually like to partner with or sponsor you. So I would love to collaborate with other YouTubers. The truth is I just haven't gotten around to sending those emails yet. Really, I look at this channel as not only a place to express myself and talk about backpacking, which is something that I love, but also as a way to connect with others. And I would love to build up a circle of friends that are into doing this same thing as well. In terms of sponsorships, they are kind of a must have at some point. When you look at the numbers, it's really difficult to make a channel sustainable long-term without some sort of sponsorship. Unless you're getting millions of views a month or something like that, YouTube doesn't pay all that well. And I do have some potential sponsors in mind that I'm gonna reach out to at some point. So when it comes to collabs and sponsorships, the answer is definitely yes, it will happen at some point, but I don't wanna name anybody's names just cause I don't wanna put them on blast. I will say though, when it comes to sponsorships that it's very important to me that I represent brands or products that I actually use and that I think would be beneficial to you. I would love some advice on backpacking with autoimmunity slash disability. I have rheumatoid arthritis and the swelling is always worse while camping. Curious if you found some things that help. First off, thank you for asking this question. This is one of those areas where I feel like I'm in sort of a unique position to help people. That that said, I can only speak to my own experience. I'm obviously not a doctor and my psoriatic arthritis is a very different disease than your rheumatoid arthritis. Also, I don't wanna tell you how to manage your disease, but I am happy to help out however I can. You may be looking for camping or backpacking specific tips and unfortunately, backpacking is just really hard on the body. Between the actual hiking, the poor nutrition, the lack of sleep, and the dehydration, it's overall just a stressful experience. It can definitely be very restful mentally to get out into nature, but it's just hard on your body. And unfortunately, I don't really have any great tips for making it easier. I do, however, have really big aspirations of backpacking in the second half of my life here, and I'm more than happy to tell you more generally what has been working for me. First off, I found a really, really good care team. All of my doctors are aware of my hiking aspirations and they're very supportive of it. They're very direct that I might have some issues, but for the most part, the care that I receive from my doctors is all centered around my ability to backpack. I'm also very involved in my own health. I do a lot of research on new treatments and therapies, and really between x-rays, blood work, doctor's appointments, physical therapy, I spend a ton of money on trying to keep my body going. And this obviously doesn't even include the fitness side of things and just overall nutrition and making sure that I'm buying healthy food, which normally costs more. I'm not saying that this is a problem that can be solved just by throwing money at it. And that's not the impression that I want to give here, but more so that I have made my physical health my top financial priority. 
other than the wedding, of course. And I do everything in my power to take full control of my own health outcomes rather than rely on doctors necessarily to tell me what to do. Although I definitely listen to my doctors. The final point that I want to make here is that I have worked very hard to find some kind of meaning in this condition of having psoriatic arthritis. For me personally, I believe that it was my body's way of telling me that I needed to stop stressing out all the time and that I was probably drinking a little bit more than I should have been. In a weird way, because this happened, I'm actually a better athlete, son, fiance, and so on. I do want to say though that I'm not on any sort of high horse here when I say that and I don't want to give the impression that I have this all figured out. Because I don't, and some days I feel absolutely defeated. But you know, we keep on keeping on. I'd be more than happy to go into more detail on this with you, so please feel free to shoot me an email or hit me up on Instagram and we can set up a Zoom call or something. What proportion of your trips are solo versus with others? What are the reasons you specifically enjoy solo trips? And what are the reasons you specifically enjoy trips with others? So I would say that my trips are about 50-50 in terms of being by myself or with other people. I really do enjoy backpacking with others just because I've never been someone that was great at just like, sitting in a room and talking for a really long time. I'm not antisocial or anything like that. I just prefer to bond with people over an activity whenever possible. You know, it's funny, my friend Craig, uh, the guy that I was talking about before who helped me get out of the woods when I had a broken leg, he and I will often joke about how we go out backpacking together because it's what we like to do as friends. But when we're in the woods, there's almost no talking whatsoever. And when we do speak, it's always really practical stuff like, can I borrow a lighter? Or do you have any more filtered water? or something like that. Backpacking is also one of the things that Lynn and I really enjoy doing together as well, and that's very important to us. That said, I do really enjoy being alone when I'm out as well. Um, and again, it's not because I don't like being around people or anything like that. I just tend to have a, a very active mind. Um, my brain's always working on like a, like a problem a creative problem of some kind or always trying to work through something. So I really like my quiet time to just kind of sit and think. What was the longest backpacking trip you've ever taken? And along with that, do you have any non-Washington trips planned? Uh, my longest backpacking trip on recent memory was like two days. I am definitely no expert through hiker or anything like that. I do actually have plans to do a through hike uh, in states other than Washington this year. So more to come on that. Have you ever used a hammock and tarp as a backpacking slash camping shelter? If so, did you sleep better than in a tent? I do own a hammock and it comes out with Lynn and I every now and again and we bring it with us basically just for lounging at campsites. I have fallen asleep in it and it is insanely comfortable. I would love to get more into hammock camping because I think that it would really streamline site selection. I just haven't been able to invest the money into it yet. Also, like I mentioned earlier, I am planning a through hike this year where a hammock just wouldn't make sense. So I've been using the Plex Solo when I go out just because that will be the tent that I'm using on that trip and I wanna get more comfortable with it. What are your favorite spots to hike in Washington? So for that, hit me up on Instagram or shoot me an email. I'm not trying to be weird about it or anything like that. That. I'm not territorial about the trails that I like or whatever. More just from a land use perspective, I try to be cognizant of the impact that posting like a trail name or something like that on social media can have. It's not like this is a massive channel or anything like that, but all it takes is for one video to blow up with a trail name in it, and all of a sudden that trail is overrun with people and they can't keep up with the maintenance on it. But by all means, hit me up and I am more than happy to tell you my favorite trails directly. Have you canoe camped or will you? I would love to canoe camp. Joe Robinette does it all the time. I always thought that it looked like a ton of fun, especially in like the Northeast uh, up into Canada. The whole like portaging thing and carrying your canoe from lake to lake just looks like an absolute blast. I have no idea what opportunities for canoe camping look like in Washington, but I will look into it. It looks awesome. How often do you hike off trail? Honestly, not nearly as often as I would like it. This is really just a combination of laziness and me not wanting to spend a ton of time planning like a shorter weekend trip. And the fact that most places that are relatively nearby, there isn't really like an off trail. You would have to actually bushwhack just because the brush is so thick in my part of the Pacific Northwest. I would love to hit the Olympic high route at some point though, which isn't too far from here. It's like three and a half hours or something like that. Something that I really need to work on as a backpacker, just because I spend so much time on very well marked trails, is my off trail navigation. If anybody has any recommendations for off trail hikes in the Pacific Northwest, definitely hit me up. I'm all ears. Can you share some recipes? 
For now, check out my shorts if you haven't already. I've posted two recipes, I believe. I don't have a whole ton of variety in my diet when I go out backpacking, so I don't really have anything else off the top of my head. That said, I do want to continue developing recipes because I think that it's fun. So keep an eye out for those. I'm sure that I will have more at some point. Also, I'm on a relatively limited diet right now just because of the arthritis stuff, so I eat a lot of really boring food. <laughs> How was your first backpacking experience? What's your favorite part of going out on a backpacking trip? I don't really remember my first backpacking experience. Uh, it's honestly always been in my life. My dad used to take my brother and I out when we were little kids. Not all the time or anything like that, but maybe a couple times a year. So I really don't remember the first time that I went out. My earliest concrete memory of backpacking though, I was probably elementary school age, so eight, nine, ten, something like that. I was out with my dad and my brother somewhere in the Appalachians and a storm had rolled in. So my dad, like a good dad, uh, set up the tent at the first spot that he could find. And we stayed there for the evening. And we woke up in the morning to a ranger outside who gave my dad a ticket because he didn't have a permit to camp in that exact spot. The ranger was just doing his job, but my dad was just trying to keep his kids dry. My favorite part of a backpacking trip this is gonna sound kind of weird, but there's this point during every trip, usually when I'm walking, but not necessarily, where I'm just overwhelmed with this feeling of how small I am and how big the world actually is. I think it's something that it's easy to forget in our day-to-day -day lives, and it really puts my problems and whatever else is going on in perspective. Some people want to feel in control, and there are certainly times during my day-to-day -day life at home when I like to feel that way as well. But when I'm out in the woods, I like the feeling of being adrift. I, I don't know how to describe it better than that. What kind of bushcraft skills would be useful to a backpacker? I did make a video on different knots for backpackers, which I will include down in the description below, so check that out if you're interested. Also, fire starting for sure. I don't make a lot of fires when I'm out backpacking, but it's definitely a good skill to have. All of those skills, whether it be starting a fire or making a shelter, are useful to know even if you don't necessarily use them. I think it's just a question of deciding what kind of experience you want to have when you're out in the woods and then prioritizing learning skills based on that. I try to always be learning, but you can only learn so much in a day, so I need to prioritize. Do you have any idols? That's a good question. I would have to say my brother. He's just one of those all around good dudes. He works hard, he takes care of his family, he's a very good brother, and he's the kind of person that you can always depend on. While our lives have always gone in very different directions, I have definitely tried to model my own character on his. With that, I hope you all enjoyed this. Please let me know down in the comments if you like this style of video. If so, I was thinking about doing one of these maybe quarterly or something like that, but definitely let me know. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next one.